Tanya, thanks for coming in. Uh, we'll just start back in 2006 with that moment. Okay. In the trailer with uh, Jay Steen and Vicky Steen. Okay. It was not, not Vicky Steen then, but take me back to that day. What, what day was it about and, and what were you doing? It was early spring. We had just gotten home from work. Um, I dropped her off. She went in and made um, Thumper some scrambled eggs and some toast. And then we had walked into the back. Their trailer had the living room in the back. Thumper was in there watching the news. And uh, we just started talking. Something came across the news about Heidi. Um, and Vicki and I were actually talking amongst ourselves. And we were just basically making a comment about, we wonder what happened to her. Once we had said that, James Steen became irate. He turned around and said, you want to F and know what happened to her? We were like, well, yeah. And he just started blurting it out. He said that him, Michael Bohr, and Roger had taken Michael Bohr's uh, van early in the morning to the store. He said they pulled up between the double doors and left the back doors open, and Mike left was in the vehicle with the van running. At the store. At the store. And that he had gone into the side door. Roger went into the front to distract her. He said when he went in around the uh, counter to get her, he grabbed her like this. He said, I grabbed her like this. He said, once I grabbed her like this, he said, Roger jumped over over the counter, proceeded to grab her too. They dragged her out the side door. Then he laughed and said, he hit the van real hard with her. Once they hit the van real hard, he said, Mike took off like a bat out of hell. He said she fought for her life, went to Jen's, and he, they weren't supposed to go to Jen's, but they did. And when they got to Jen's, Jen was pretty upset, flipping out that they had brought her there. He said then they beat her with whatever they could find in the garage. He said then they wrapped her up, and then he laughed again. He said when we took her across the road, we almost got caught by an oncoming car, he said, because we couldn't get her into the thicket. Um, we asked why it happened and he said um, there was big big guys involved we tried getting the names out of him he would not tell us then we asked him about the innocent man in jail and he said not my problem that's what he said and after a while of you know asking him these questions I then asked him um, I'm sorry it's okay. and then he kept saying if you don't believe me because me and Vicki were like yeah right thumper because Thumper always portrayed himself as a good guy. So we were like, you didn't do this. And he's like, you don't know me very well. He says, and if you don't believe me, go F and ask Jennifer. She was there. So at that point, I'm getting frustrated, and I got up to leave. And the whole time I'm walking out of it, he's screaming, if you don't believe me, go look. And if you go look, he said, I'll have to kill both of you two, because then you'll be witnesses. Years before this, I had already had a premonition that Mike had done it and Roger had done it. And when James was telling me this, I did not tell him that I already knew Mike and Roger were involved in it. I just kind of kept my mouth shut and let him keep talking. I didn't feed him anything. Um, years before that, I had caught on to Roger. I picked him up on a property on 69. About when? Um, I want to say 1996, 97. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I picked him up with Michael West on 69 at that dumpy place on 69 there. This is Roger yep, yeah. and uh, I kept telling my husband at the time, said, Shaw, don't let him in the truck. He had something to do with Heidi, and I was arguing with him about this. Finally, he lets Roger in the truck, and I start giving it to Roger, asking him about Heidi, and he had the same response that she was a rat, and he kept looking out the window. By the time we got to Fulton and dropped him off and he got out, everybody looked at me and said he had something to do with it. Tanya, you're up first, and, and, and first of all, I gotta say, if somebody's telling you that story, you had to be terrified. I stopped hanging out with them after that, cut all, right. all ties. Um, you came here today, you took a lie detector test, and we asked you, is it true that another man confessed to kidnapping Heidi Allen from the gas station? You answered yes. Is it true that another man confessed to killing Heidi Allen? You answered yes. The results came back the same to each question, and they came back that Tanya told the truth. What did you tell the prosecutors and the two investigators about uh, Breckenridge's or the possibility of Breckenridge's involvement with the disappearance of Heidi Allen? 
What did you tell them? Well, what was said that day is uh, that I was driving, that I worked driving hauling cars for Murtaz, and that I hauled the load, uh, got back, and it was like two weeks later, a week later, Roger came up to me and said something about me hauling a stolen vehicle, a van. And I said, okay, I went and asked Rich Murtaugh if that happened. He said, no, that was that. Uh, then we discussed further that it was like eight months after that, we were at a party and uh, Roger showed up, he was drunk, and he had mentioned something about, do you know what was in that van? And I said, no, I have no idea what was in that van. And he went on the part about the remains of Heidi Allen. I went and asked Rich Murtaugh the same question. And he told me, no, it wasn't. You said that there were two conversations with Mr. Breckenridge about this, is that right? The first one was him telling me I hauled a stolen vehicle. And the second one was where? Where was that conversation? And oh, at a party. I can't remember if it was on the power lines or... It's where everybody would go and there'd be a party. And you'd keg, you'd be drinking. It's a keg party. I don't know if it was Happy Valley back then or wherever it was me we were at. When I was just, that conversation? Oh, God. 95, 90, late 94, early 95, middle 95. I don't know exactly. I can You know what I mean? I don't... If I could remember when I was working and where I was working and how, when that was going, I could be more, but I can't, I don't, sorry. Did you tell the prosecutors that Roger Breckenridge made a number of comments about Heidi Allen's disappearance? I can remember hearing it over at Westcott's house a couple of times, but other than that, everybody thought Roger was just blowing steam. That's all he ever did. What did Roger say at Westcott's house and when about Heidi Allen's I, disappearance? Both, I, what exactly was ever said, I couldn't, I, we don't, you don't listen to Roger. Roger starts piping off, he's a, how do I say this without getting in trouble up here? Uh, a lot of hot air. You know what I'm saying? He, you never knew if he was telling you the truth. Why do you think I went to Rich Murtaugh when he told me I, I hauled a stolen vehicle? That's going to occur in Canada with a stolen vehicle. I don't want to go to jail. I didn't want to go to jail back then. That's why I went right to Rich Murtaugh and asked, did I haul a stolen vehicle? And he told me no. How many different times did Roger Breckenridge bring up the subject of Heidi Allen's disappearance with you? Oh, but I... I know those two times. It could have been more that I had heard it or whatever. I, I never kept count. In 2014, during your interview, interview with the prosecutors and the two sheriffs, what did you tell them regarding the shipment taken to the facility? In other words, was the shipment taken directly to the shredder? The shredder? Did you All shipments are taken directly to the shredder. Some are stacked up out in the backyard. Some are taken right there and ran right through. I ran a step deck trailer. So, yeah, I backed up to the shredder and the crane unloaded me. Did you tell them you were told to take the shipment that Breckenridge was told? I about? drove the step deck trailer. That's where I went. I said if they would have, like I told them that day, if they would have put that van on my trailer and Heidi would have been in that van, that's where it would have went, right to the shredder. Plain and simple. That's what I told them. Did you tell them, the prosecutors, that you were told to take the shipment directly no. to no. the shipper? No. When Roger made these comments to you about Heidi Allen, you can think of, at this point, four different times that this may have come up? It probably was more, but you heard these comments out of a lot of people. Everybody knew what happened to Heidi back then. Everybody was talking like they knew what happened to her, but nobody knew anything. Regarding your statement on June 14, 2013, with the investigator, uh, Petrosky, were you asked any questions about Roger Breckenridge on that date? I don't believe so. Were you asked any questions about Michael Gore on that date? I don't believe so. I was asked if I knew him, that's about all I can remember that I don't believe we went into depth in there. It was more about the allegations against me. Okay. What did you tell him about the allegations against you? What they were specifically? Not true. What were you asked about specifically on that day? If I had, if I did what Tanya said I did, and I said no, I didn't do what Tanya said I did. 
they said that I buried Heidi Allen's body under a cabin on, I believe you guys said Rice Road. I told them no. They went and searched. They didn't find Heidi Allen in the cabin. Like I said, she was lying. What did you say, if anything, about Jennifer Westcott to them on that day? Not very much. I didn't say very much to them at all about anybody. Well, what was the conversation about that day? Yeah, maybe that, yeah, I knew her. If Jennifer was his girlfriend, that's about it. I didn't, I was not, how do I, I, there wasn't a discussion there. I didn't want to do them signed statements, and that's the reason I signed them the way I did. I'm doing life without parole in prison, lady. I am not a snitch, plain and simple. And that's what I told them. I'm not going to sit here and tell on people. And then when I read the paper, what Roger Allen put in the paper, which, which Roger Breckenridge put in the paper, that, yeah, he picked up the van that he, well, sure, that's what I was told. I told him I had nothing, knowingly, nothing to do with Heidi Allen's disappearance. And I had nothing knowingly to do with Heidi Allen's disappearance because I didn't know if that van was on the back of my truck. I didn't inspect my loads when I went and delivered them. They were cabled, they were done. I got in the truck, I drove, I dropped them off, I came back. They were crushed cars. When you just said that you are not a snitch, is it your testimony that you would not tell on anyone under any circumstances? Not in this circumstance, I'm doing life without parole in prison. So that circumstance, no, nope, you're not going to see me telling anybody. So if you had information about Roger Breckenridge confessing to Heidi Allen, you would not tell because you don't want to be a snitch. I told them what I knew what Roger told us. I told them. If you knew what happened to Heidi Allen and who was responsible, would you tell? No. But I don't know. Mr. Breckenridge, you said you don't know the Thibodeaus. No. Nope. You don't know Richard Thibodeau? No. Nope. You don't know Gary Thibodeau? No. Nope. As far as you know, you've never met them? Never. Do you have any personal knowledge whether, do you have any personal knowledge regarding Gary Thibodeau's guilt regarding the abduction or kidnapping of Heidi Allen? I never knew anything, I never, I never, I don't know. Would it be fair to say, as you sit there, you personally don't know whether he's guilty or innocent? No. Well, let me ask you, did you have anything to do with the abduction of Heidi Allen? No, no. Did you go to the DW store on Easter morning of 94? No. Did you work with any other people to lure her out of the store and throw her in a van? No. Did you see Heidi Allen? No. At Easter morning of 94 or any time after that? No. Did you ever dispose of her remains? No. Do you have any idea where her remains are? No. If you did, if you had heard reliable information on where <coughs> her remains are, would you tell somebody? Yes, I would. Why would you? Because I got kids their age. I would, well, I would want to know if something happened to one of my daughters, I would want to know what, was, what happened to my kid. Yes, I would. And that's the guy on the street. If I knew where she was, I'd be telling, right here and right now. But you don't know. But I don't know. I wish I did. What do you know about the Heidi Allen case? That it's different from what everybody else believes. To hang out with uh, Roger Breckenridge? Oh, uh, not really. No? I no. Why not? He scares me. Why? He, I, I, I think he, he's fully capable of anything. What do you mean? When you say anything, what do you mean? I don't... He's got them eyes that... The killer eyes you were yeah, talking about? Yeah. Why, has he killed somebody you know I don't know. You don't know? Like I said, I, I go the other way. 
I don't want to know them people. You never junked cars with them or anything? Junk? Did some junking with them? Um, which Breckenridge? Roger. Roger. How about James Steen? James? Jay. Thumper? Jay? Jay Steen? Thumper? I know the name Thumper. The one that killed his wife up here in Pulaski, or uh, Zach's, Vicky, Vicky and Chuck Carr. You've never hung out with Jay Steen, James Steen, Thumper, or whatever you want to call him. No. I know Roger Breckenridge. You never scrapped with them, because they're oh. saying they know you. They're saying that they scrapped with you. That's how. I'm, that's why I'm getting here to you. Um, so many years ago. What do Roger Breckenridge is, is ringing a bell, but but his face and the same thing with Thumper, the face isn't coming to me. Right. You show me a picture of him, then I go, oh, that guy. Right. Well, let me ask you right up front. What what do you think happened to Heidi? What was done with her body? No. What happened to her? What? Where is she? What happened to her? They made her disappear. Who's they? There's any number of places she could have ended up. What if I told you, Mike, that? Somebody said you had something to do with it. They don't know what they're talking about. Why? I'm not capable of doing anything like that. No? Why not? Why it's would not you? Not in me to do it. Not in you to do it? Why you say that? I'm not a violent man. No? No. Just have panic episodes and... Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. So in your panic episode, do you think you could do something like this? Why not? No, I'm... So do you remember what you do during these Thou episodes? Thou shall not kill. I'm not going to hell for nobody. Right. Thou shall not kill. Yeah. So during these episodes, you don't think you would have a, a lapse in your thought process and no. snap and kill somebody? Talk, uh, take them away and no. do something with them? You don't think so? No. So what if I told you that some people are saying that you, Roger Breckenridge, and James Dean had something to do with this? <laughs> I barely know who they are. Well, no, I mean, you, just, you seem so preoccupied with the case, and you had a whole well, box yeah, full of stuff. And uh, I was obsessed with it because I took a personal note in it because she was the same age as my oldest daughter, and it just freaked me out that a kid could be taken away like that, and it, I took it personal. Let me ask you straight up. Did you have anything to do with Heidi's disappearance? No. What does it make you feel like when I say that, when I ask you that? Well, how do you feel when I ask you that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? When I ask you, if you I don't had know any... what, what it... Are you pissed off about it? No, I'm not pissed. Mm -hmm. um, I just... just confused. I don't, I don't understand why you think it's me. Well, like I told you, these rumors, these people, you said, like, all this stuff that, you know, people are saying all this stuff, everything comes back together. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here talking to you. Things just they're saying that you had something to do with it. That's crazy. That's crazy? What do you think about these people saying this about you? What do you think about these people? I don't like them. Why? I think they're evil people. Well, I'm asking if you knew that Michael Gore had been previously convicted of abducting a 21-year-old female by grabbing her from behind and pushing her in a car while hitting her with another man in the car, would that have been significant to you? Associated with a construct of the investigation of the abduction of Heidi Allen? Yes. Absolutely. To the extent that uh, any suspect, any individual, as part of the investigation, if there were facts that would be reliably developed, establishing that a person may have been involved in or a witness to the abduction of Heidi Allen, in the first instance, the Sheriff's Department most certainly would have uh, I'm not asking about that. Heidi Allen. If you knew he had a previous abduction, would that have been significant to you? Michael Gore abducting another female from As the parking lot by choking her and dragging her into a car, would that have been important to you? within the construct of the abduction of Heidi Allen. Yes. 
certainly to the extent that there was reliable information that an individual had previously participated in uh, imprisonment or abduction of an individual, that absolutely would be something that should be considered by uh, a prosecutor on the issue of whether or not there's some measure of relationship between the previous conduct of that person to the matter before the, that's presently presenting to the investigation. That was not the case here, though. Because you had no information about Michael Bohr's past criminal history? Is that your testimony? There was information about Michael Bohr in the report, and I'm, I'm drawing from memory, Ms. Bianco, I truly am. Uh, I can recall that he was interviewed by... I guess my question is, do you I'm know answering about the this? I'm answering the question. I recall... No, it's not responsive. I'm just asking yeah, you yeah, about the criminal history. history. That's it. Earlier, he said no. I didn't know he had to About 10 minutes to answer that question. All right. Well, that night I was waitressing. I had finished an eight-hour shift, and uh, myself and a few co-workers went to JoJo's, which was a 24-hour restaurant, and just to get a little bite to eat and wind down from the very busy shift. Um, and so I was... Uh, I had something to eat and I decided I was tired and I was ready to go. So I actually left before my other co-workers left. So I walked out of the restaurant, got into my car. As I was pulling away, two men walked in front of my car that I had to actually stop. And they were both glaring at me through the windshield. And I just, I mean, I was like what's wrong with these people and did I thought it was them? odd did they actually they actually got in front of my car that I actually yeah. did have to stop and so um, and then they passed okay. and then I continued driving right. and I only lived a couple miles from there and so I'm driving home and I never saw any cars behind me and there was no headlights nothing and I pulled into the complex where I lived. It was a large apartment complex. There was a lot of parking spaces. Pulled into my space. Uh, never saw a car pull in behind me. And as I gathered my things to get out of my car, I closed my car door. And the next thing, there was a man behind me saying, excuse me, can you help me find someone? And the next thing, he had me in a chokehold with his other hand over my mouth, dragging me backwards. And then I saw this vehicle, and I saw a man that was in the passenger seat climb over into the driver's seat, and then he opened the passenger door, folded the seat forward, and at that point, Michael Bohr, which, I mean, I didn't know who he was at that time. Um, at that point, that's when um, he no longer had his hand over my mouth. Because, you know, I mean, I was fighting to breathe and fighting, you know, just to be able to breathe. And finally, he stopped that, and then I was able to scream. And as I was screaming um, and fighting being pushed into and forced into this car. Pushed and pulled from the inside, too. And John was inside, his brother, was pulling at my legs. I mean, my legs were in that car. And Michael was still forcing me. And I had, I mean, seriously, it was just my fingertips on the top of that car. That was right. the only thing that was, that was the last grip that I mm -hmm. had. And... Um, as all of a sudden, John let go of my legs, and he told Michael, let go of her, get in the car, we got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it was. I'm assuming that it probably was maybe a light, maybe someone turned on a light. Someone must have heard my mm -hmm. scream. And um, at that point, I was able to break away and get away from them but the thing that just is so frightful for me is that had this been like a van or or a larger vehicle there's just no way because there was 
I can't imagine that after they were done with whatever their plan was that night, that I would have been brought back full. I don't think I would Thank you. And it wasn't money because my purse was right next to the car. All he had to do was just pick it up. It was right there. And I mean, I was just an unfortunate I was the unfortunate target that night. Yeah. And, and I truly, truly do not think that I am the only one. Okay. I think I, in my heart, I feel I am the only one that survived. You think because of the way they carried because it out? Because of the way, the way they went about it. Yeah. I mean, he never, I mean, they never spoke. I mean, next thing I'm seeing this guy inside a vehicle, you know, sl slide over to the other side and open that door. like. Like, they knew exactly um, what they were going to do. Yeah. They knew exactly. And Michael, who had you and in a chokehold, was punching you, too. He right? was yeah. punching me. Yeah. I My skirt was ripped all the way up to the waistband. Yeah. It was, you know, like an A-line. That was my uniform, my mm -hmm. waitress uniform. It was just an A-line skirt that had, like, a small little, like, kick pleat in the front. I mean, that's the struggle. I mean, yeah. I, I just could grab on, pushed off, whatever I could. Yeah. I feel that I need to speak for maybe those who can't because I do not think I'm the only one. Yeah. If someone can do that once, what, why would someone think that they couldn't do it multiple times? I, I don't feel that I was the first, I don't feel that I was the last. Tell us several times that he would do a psychic hiding. Do you recall the time period in which he was making these comments to you? Uh, what do you mean time period? Like, when, was it when you only when you were working at Dunn's Bar? Yes. Was anyone else present when he made those comments to you? Um, Alex McNam and Tanya Becca. Did you tell anyone about the comments regarding Heidi Heidi Allen? That Mr. Moore was making to you? My mom. What did you tell your mom? I just told her that he would always threaten us like he, you know, to do us that he did Heidi. What made you quit your employment at Benspar? That exactly. How long did you work for Benspar? Um, not even a year. Was it closer to say, three months, nine months to the ballpark estimate? I'd say about six to nine months. Did he ever talk to you about Heidi Allen or talk in the shop that you heard about Heidi Allen? Um, just that he would threaten us to do us as he did Heidi. He never, he never told you that he directly killed Heidi Allen? He said verbatim, I'll do you as I did Heidi. But what did, what did you take from the vague threat? Um, I, did I think that he would honestly, you know, do anything to me? No, I didn't. But did it bother me to the point where I would quit my job? Yes, it did. But you didn't actually think he was going to cause harm to you? I, to me personally, no. Um, I knew that he knew my entire family. Did James Dean ever talk about the disappearance of Heidi Allen in your presence? Yes, he did. When was that? Um, a few years after the... Thibodeau trial, I do remember that. Um, he stopped by my house and he, he, I was in a discussion with my boys about going for a bicycle ride and they were probably about 14 or 15 and it was getting late at night and Jay Steen had stopped in to see if I had a day's work that he could do. And he just happened to pop in the door the same time I was like kind of discussing with my boys to let him go for the bicycle ride and he looked right at my boys and they were from me to you away and he said oh boys he says it's getting late and you better listen to your dad he says uh look at what happened to Heidi Allen and nobody was talking about Heidi Allen at the time and I was in kind of a heated discussion with my boys so I wasn't paying a real lot of attention at that time 
of what he was saying and then he, he continued on and he said she's long gone now and he says she she's uh gone to canada he says and i know more about this heidi allen case than the swale county sheriffs they got the wrong guys they says they got the Thibodeaux in there, and the Thibodeau boys didn't do it. I think you told Ms. Peebles, you generally knew Jay's team to be a truthful person? Yes, I did. Did you ever tell your boys, hey, look, don't do this because this could happen, or see something bad happen on the news? See, boys, that, that's what could happen if you do that. You ever do something like that as a dad? Um, yeah, I guess I, I probably have done something like that. And I guess my point, Mr. Clark, is, I mean, was it your sense that Jay's team was trying to get the boys to stay home like you wanted rather than going for a bike ride like they wanted to? Is that your sense? I didn't really give it much thought at that time. I, what I, there was, must have been enough thought that when I was laying in bed that October night that it really hit me hard. And that's fair enough. And again, you said, when Jay said she's long gone to Canada, he didn't say whether she was alive. He didn't say whether she was dead. No, 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 he didn't say whether she was alive or dead. He didn't say she was in a van squished up and sent to Canada? No, he did not say that. Did he tell you how he knew she was going to Canada? No, he didn't say that. Okay. He didn't tell you how he knew that she had gone to Canada, just expressing his belief that that's where she was. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of got that, but I got a real sincere feeling that he might have known something about the case at that time. Did Jennifer Westcott ever bring up the abduction of Heidi Allen? She did. She did. When do? You, when was that? Um, we were at a family uh, picnic. Um, well, it was more like a cookout slash birthday party. Um, not sure exactly which child it was for. Um, there that they would randomly have parties sometimes and cookouts and. We were all sitting at the picnic tables one day when um, someone had mentioned something about Heidi Allen. Well, someone mentioned something about missing kids. Jennifer brought up Heidi Allen, and um, I'm not sure who else at the table was listening. Um, I was sitting directly across from her at the time, so obviously I was listening. Um, and I asked her, well, what about Heidi Allen? And she told me that they had the wrong guy in prison and that they didn't know exactly who had the right person. Now, where were you when this conversation took place exactly? Whose house were you? at Ronnie West's house. Do you recall when that was? What, how long ago? Um, I would say probably about 10 years ago or so. He just told me that him, um, Michael Bohr and uh, Roger had uh, taken Mike's van to the store and that they grabbed her from the store and they brought her to your house and um, he had said that you did flip out when you guys got there and uh, you know I stuck up for you and I don't blame you for flipping out and uh, basically that's you know what he had said it happened and you know, that's you know it's not your fault though you know so I don't want you, I knew a long time ago I just didn't want you to think that I thought no, I, um... less of you I really, uh, in my own head, dropped that shit. Right. I don't know, probably about 10 years ago. Yeah. But it took me a while to get it gone. Well, how the hell did, why did they even involve you or even do this? Yeah. I mean. I don't know. You were young. All I know is that, that for cocaine. It was for cocaine. Yeah, it sounds like the area. I don't know, kiddo. I love you, and I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. Did you even know and I that? Couldn't get did you even know that they this was Heidi that they brought there, and that this is what they were gonna do? Uh uh. You had no clue that they just showed up with her. Yeah. Oh, what a bad position for you. Surprised scared the shit out of you. Well, they, it's not even. They didn't even bring her in the house. Yeah, that's. Gator says the man. Well, Thumper told me they took her out in the garage. And uh, me and Vicky at this point, honestly, Jennifer didn't believe him. And he said right. that they took her out in the garage and that they beat her till she died. Uh, I don't know about that. That's what he, that's what he, uh, he had told me. 
But I mean, as long as you, that's all you know and everything, and I mean, the only thing you said you did was junk the van with Roger, then I wouldn't really worry about anything. I mean, you really had no part of it, and it's kind of sad that that even happened. Is that why you guys went to Florida? Uh huh. She knows too, so I'm letting you know. Thumper told all of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Everybody in the area knows Megan, Ruben. Um, he told me and Vicky. He even threatened to kill me and Vicky. He said uh, that if anybody said anything, he would kill me and Vicky. And me and Vicky, you know how Thumper is at that point. He was just a happy go lucky guy. I never would have thought that, Jen. Right. And, you know, what they do? Just leave her in the van when they got to your house? Yeah. Who actually freaking killed her? I have no idea. It didn't happen around me. Oh, good. At least you weren't part of that. It's bullshit that this even happened. And when was that? When the day she came up missing? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, no, kiddo. I love you. I wish she could just give you a hug and I'm sure that'd make you feel better. Alright. Did you know everybody? Yeah. Knew? It bothers me to talk about it. I won't lie to you, but... Well, I know, hon, but that's why I, I... It bothers me because it's been bothering me since Slumper told me. I was like, no way. Jennifer doesn't know. She would have talked to me and Vicky about it because we were all very close. No, I couldn't say anything about that. I never know. Never anybody. Why did you know, I... Don't let them me. Yeah, they... Why was it? Why didn't she say anything? Because they scared you, hon? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, who scared you, Roger? Probably Roger living with you? Yeah. Yeah. It was all crazy. Yeah, well. Yeah, with all them people. What'd they do, threaten you if you said anything? No. They just... I just didn't. They never said anything. Nothing, nothing was ever said to me in regards to it. Did you ever think about turning Roger in for it, honey? Huh? Did you ever think about just turning Roger in for it? Nope. No. Nope. That scared you that bad, huh? I would never, op I would never open a can of worms like that. Tell me about this uh, conversation with Tanya. Um, actually, it all started on Facebook. I got a friend request from her. Well, when was this? A couple of days ago, last week, it last was, year. Uh, no, it was last week. Mm -hmm. Last week. And she says, I'm telling you, Thumper and Roger brought that girl to your house. I said, no, they didn't, because I lived with my mother, and I'm sure that I would know if they came in there with a woman they were getting ready to kill. I never once ever seen Heidi Allen in the first place. She's like, I'm telling you right now. You know what I'm talking about. I said, Tanya, I really don't know what the hell you're talking about. The biggest problem I have with what you're telling me is that Tanya recorded your phone calls with her. And you say that you, that when they pulled up with the white van, and she stayed out in the van. Well, then I'll tell you what, she chopped something because I never said anything about a white man. I don't know anything about a white man. I was at my parents' house. I just told you that from the get-go. Yeah, but I'm right. listening to the recording, and it's you on the recording. Well, I'm telling you, I, if, if you have the recording, then I was on speakerphone. There was plenty of people around my table. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you pinpoint that I said that the bumper pulled into my house with Heidi Allen and a white man? Yeah. For real? Yeah. Because that's the craziest shit I ever heard in my life. Yeah, I got it on recording. <laughs> oh, my God. I really don't... I mean, I was... Uh, this f***ing lady... Where does she even come up? Uh, what is this about? I mean, did she... Where, where does this even originate from? What do you mean? What does what? How, how the hell do I even get involved in this? I mean... I, 
I'm completely lost in how I haven't talked to this woman forever. And she calls and tells me her hus her ex husband is gonna run her mouth. And then now I'm admitting that there was a white band in my driveway with Yeah, that's what's on the recording. When she talks about the white van, when they pulled up, they said that they took her from the D and W in the white van. And I said I don't know anything about them taking her in a white van. No, that's not what you said. That's not what I said. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <sighs> you remember everything else pretty good, what she records, but that part. No, because I really nobody came to my house in a white van with Heidi Allen or with anybody else. On Easter Sunday, I was at my freaking mother's house. I mean, my father's still alive. I don't know if he, he was Well, she me. says when you, you get pissed off, because you get pissed off because they brought her there, and you say, yep. She's like, well, he's like, well, you're like, well, she stayed out in the van. She never came in the house. And she says, you get pissed off, you got pissed off, but I don't blame you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm lost now. I, I have nothing else to say. Nothing else to say. What do you mean? Because, I, I mean, obviously I was totally fucking pranked. I mean, this bitch called and told me something she thought would happen that happened. Mm -hmm. And now it's backfiring on me that that Heidi Allen was at my house. I mean, this is totally. Why do you say backfiring on me? Because you're sitting here telling me because now I'm a now I'm. You've got a problem because I've already said that Heidi Allen was in my house, I'm and I and and with and I guess if I was you, I would have a problem with that too. Right. But I mean, holy for shit sakes! I don't. I mean, I've got five kids. I didn't really expect to be here this long already. But right. um, uh, where are we going with this? You came in here on your own, okay? Right. You're gonna you're gonna leave here on your own, okay? Mm -hmm. But what I heard on the tape, because I just listened to it again, is you, Tanya, talking about Dean, Roger, and Boar showing up with Heidi Allen at your house. And you saying, yeah, she never came in. She she was in the van. Even if this did happen, you know, you're not in any trouble. If this happened. But you need to explain to me why you would say that. Probably just to shut the crazy bitch up, to honestly tell you the truth. Because I, I mean, she was just rambling on and on. When she's talking about them coming to your house in this white van, you also make reference to helping Roger jump the van, get rid of the van. I said that? Yeah. I said I helped Roger jump the van. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're sure? Positive. Because Roger was working at the junkyard. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I helped them junk a van, which I didn't work at all. Yeah, you're on the tape saying that you helped Roger get rid of the van. And when they showed up, he was like, no, she didn't even come in. She stayed out in the van. Well, then I was definitely running off at the mouth to shut that bitch up because I d really, I mean, <laughs> I really don't. I really don't. So, honestly. You know what? Um. I would like to take you over to my desk, do a quick statement of what you told me about all the, whatever happened since you, about the Heidi Allen, what you know about it, and her Tanya calling you up, you know, anything you want to add, you know, put in there. I'd like to go do that. Have you put it down on paper and sign it, you know, so I can sell your side of the story? Well, I mean, the, um, should I really? I mean, because this is a this is a pretty big case. I'm not, I'm not really a stupid person. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't really think I should sign a statement until I I make sure. I mean, I, I agree with signing a statement. What I have said is to my acknowledgement. Okay. Okay. So, so I guess that's not a really big deal. But I mean, is something coming about this? So Jennifer, give me your best today. Tell me everything that you know about this. Um, 
The only thing I do know about it is what Roger said about that van. What you say? The, the only thing he said to me is that Heidi was burning a, in a wood stove and taken care of in a van. I don't know where that goes from there. But I'm talking to people, I'm telling you, Tracy Breckenridge knows. <laughs> well, how did Roger give this information? What were the circumstances? I was nagging him after he was interrogated. I'm like, why? Why are they coming after you? Why do they think you have something to do with it? And he just told, after a while, me constantly bitching at him about it, because I was wondering myself. And he just told me, he's like, the only thing I know is something about her being burned up in a wood stove and taken care of in a van. And I really just, I dropped it because I didn't, I didn't want to know. Well, tell me, what do you mean, the missing van from who? From who was the owner? Thibodeau's. That phone call, you're talking about the van. And you're telling me now that Roger's mentioning the van and the burning of the body back then. It's, 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 it's making me believe that you had information at the time, more information that you're telling me about now. Yeah. I'm thinking no. for you. I'm really no, trying to think for you. Think and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I am, I am. Yeah. Because let's I'll tell you what, if I wasn't thinking, I'd be crying and coming let's up with excuses. Let's put this to really, just today, let's put it to bed. You've, you've gone through enough, you know, you don't need this media nonsense anymore. Tell me what you want. I don't want to hear what the Post Standard Mill. That's all I know. I don't know want to hear oh what, God, what yeah. Boomer Mill. I don't want to hear. I, I want to know what Jen knows. Jen knows Just Jen about, about, okay. about that time, not that's now. About that time when you're that's young. That's all I know. When you're about young. That you're band. easily manipulated that's by an older guy. There's a band missing in the investigation. That that's what I know. If there's a band missing in the investigation, that's what I. Know. Not to keep harping on that phone call. That phone call. Did have substance in it, and you're talking about steam, horror, and 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 Roger being outside with some girl in the van. That's because we, I mean, we talked. Obviously, like you said, it, it's not a, a brand new conversation. That conversation came from the night before when we talked on the phone. You know, um, and sh she's pretty manipulative. <laughs> I mean. I don't, the only thing I know is about But really, Jim, would you be manipulated into saying something that wasn't so like that? <sighs> you know? It didn't look like you were bragging. It looked like mm -hmm. it was something that was troubling you. I, it, I don't know. I, it sounded like it was troubling you. And you were talking to who you thought was somebody troubled. that was going to be a friend. I'm hung on that phone call, I gotta tell you. I just I, I can't get over the phone call because I've done so many of them on different things during my investigations, and I got a pretty good gauge, you know, on, on when somebody's telling something from knowledge. And it sounded like you were talking to Tanya from I, I, I swear you, to God, you, I do not, I was Jen, not with Roger. Jen, Jen, you're here, I want you to help us. I'm trying. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick your brain until I get so what we you need know. To, we want, need to, we need to pick Tracy Breckenridge's brain. Well, let's pick your brain right now. I want you to send me in the directions that aren't false. I want you well, to send me in directions. I'm telling you something to do with that van. If they're telling me to shut my goddamn fucking mouth, and that's the only thing I know about is that van, then that's the way you need to go. You need to go do some more investigating on that van. On what Roger told me. I'm curious <laughs> the most about this situation, though. About this situation? Yes. I was buying the drugs off the dose. I mean, really. Because... Even after he was interrogated, we were still buying the goddamn drugs, and he was still going there, you know. But why do you have a hard time listening to this? Because I fucking, I'm a fucking bullshitter. It's retarded. I can't even believe I said half the shit on there. So ridiculous. Let's listen to I'm gonna fucking slap myself in the head every day over this. I want you guys to go talk to Tracy Breckenridge. But you guys won't listen to me. I'm telling you, we need to talk to Tracy in regards to the fucking other band. There's another band that you guys aren't aware of. And I can't believe 20 years later I have to tell you guys this. Who? It's out. Who? That's, All right. that's it. Now, who, who told you that? Roger and Tracy. Roger told you? Yes. What did he say? You guys are freaking me out here. What did he say? You know, if he gets out of prison, he and she's coming after me. Hey, hey. What did he say? 
He sent me a Tracy strip at the infirmary terminal, all this property. He didn't tell me where he scrapped it. He didn't tell me how he scrapped it. He just said that I had a Tracy scrapped it. I think it was just Tracy running her mouth, not thinking I was going anywhere with it. Who was, on it. Who was present during on this conversation? Me, Roger, and Tracy. What did Roger say when she Roger told her to shut the fuck up. Roger told her to shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. And then what? And that was it. I asked to go home because they were both home and I wanted to. Did Roger tell you? The Roger told me to shut the fuck up. Did he tell you what he did with Tracy in the van? No, he didn't. Tracy said I would. He jumped the van. He jumped the van. I said, What do you mean he jumped the van? I said, I don't want. I want just take me home. Just take me home. And that was the end of the. That was the whole. I didn't go back around him for a couple of days. Did you ever talk about this again? You must no. have. You um, must have. No, we didn't talk about it until um, Roger was interrogated. That's when I was like, dude, you need to tell me right now what the fuck is up. And he's like, it's something about being she was taken care of. And I don't know what that means. Why don't you tell me why why we're here? What, we're, what are we here to discuss tonight? Well, we're here to discuss the lies I said. Okay. <laughs> and, and and regarding what? In regards to the Allen case. Okay, and what lies are you are you talking about? I told Tanya all kinds of lies that uh, they came to my house on Easter Sunday. I told them I seen a band. Um, you know, you know, that's one bad thing about lying is you can't remember the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, it is it is uh, Yeah, you're definitely you're definitely right. Yeah, you, know, you forget your you forget your lies, you get yep. wrapped up in it. Um and the good thing about this this uh, exam here is the way to pass it is to tell the truth. And just from what but you just told me, I'm, you, I'm here. That's why yeah, I'm here. It's I a lot it. easier. Yeah, it sounds like it's a lot <laughs> easier to tell the truth because um, those are the things that are, that come natural to us. Yeah, uh, telling the truth, and, and when we tell a lie, like you've experienced now, that that, that kind of complicates things, right? Way over. Yeah. Way yeah. over. I want it off here. Yeah. Yep. And I want it out of there. Yeah. Because <laughs> yep. I'm a bad person in New York State right now. He even, John O'Brien even sent me a letter saying, if you don't cooperate, you have no control over what we post. So I make an interview with him, and I interview with him, right. and I still didn't get anything that no I can only they imagine if I hadn't talked to him all of a sudden. Yeah. He didn't, put, he didn't uh, put any of that out there? That you talked to him, that you... That said this didn't no, that I dished but the I dished the interview when he was actually right in my house talking to me and the kids. Did you have anything to do with um, the disappearance of, of Heidi Allen? No. Did you have any um, anything to do with um, would be Roger, uh, Michael, and James um, and the Heidi Allen uh, no. disappearance? Uh, did you? Uh, did you did you live on Rice Road? No. Um, did any did those three uh, come over to to your house at any time, whether it was on Rice Road or or some other place? Not together. Not together. Because <laughs> I never met Mike Boyd, but Roger and Thumper were like two peas in a pod. Okay. Doing their drugs. Um, did you have any any involvement with with those two? Um, and and Heidi Allen. Any knowledge at all about um, what had happened and, and who had done anything with, with Heidi Allen? I watched that in the news. Okay. I was home with my parents. Any any direct knowledge that came from anybody else? No. Any direct knowledge that you witnessed yourself? No. Um, any knowledge of anybody else doing anything with Heidi Allen? Any, anything involved with the disappearance of Heidi Allen? No, just the man. Which okay. I already said. Which that you, that's what you talked to already with the, with the district attorney's yep. office. Um, and what, regarding the van, what do you know about the van, and how did, how is that, do you believe that that's part of this? Um, Roger's wife told me they scrapped it. Okay. I didn't see it personally, but Roger's wife said that they had scrapped the van, and he told her to shut up. Okay, relax. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Regarding the disappearance of Heidi Allen, do you intend to answer truthfully each question about that? Yes. Related to the disappearance of Heidi Allen, do you know for sure who was involved? No. Regarding the disappearance of Heidi Allen, do you know for sure if those three men were involved? No. All right. Um, looking over the, looking over these these charts, uh, there was you know there was a couple questions that um, that showed us a stronger reaction than, than some of the other ones. Um, and uh, specifically, two, two of them were related to the disappearance of Heidi Allen. Do you know for sure who was involved? And do you know for sure if those three men were involved regarding the disappearance of Heidi Allen? Is is there any trouble with those questions, or because or what we talked about? I don't think so. I didn't even know any of them at that time. Right. The disappearance of Eddie Allen. So, um, so you didn't know you didn't know any of them at all at, at all at that time. My daughter from Auburn called me and uh, said, if I heard all lots happening on Rice Road. Are you aware of it? Walter Rice's own property on the sleepy road that bears his family name for decades. But now his five acre lot and six car garage has suddenly become the focal point of a brutal murder investigation tied to a kidnapping case now two decades old. I guess he got evidence that it happened in my garage garage part where it was ended up in her life so it's it did upset me. Rice recalls hearing about the kidnapping of 18 year old Heidi Allen in 1994 while living in Florida. At the time Rice was renting a trailer he owned on his five acre property on Rice Road to Jennifer Westcott and her family. According to newly revealed information Westcott's boyfriend at the time James Steen and two other men brought Heidi to the garage on Rice's property and beat her to death. A witness says Steen bragged about the men dismembering her body in the garage before moving her across the street to bury her beneath a cabin in the woods. It's hard to believe that something like that could happen. Rice, who's followed the Heidi Allen case closely, including the trial and conviction of Gary Thibodeau for her abduction, is now deeply disturbed with the new revelations. 20 years later that the possibly the wrong guy's in jail for 20 years in the party that's still buried somewhere that you're still looking for after 20 years that upset me too investigators will continue their search for heidi allen's remains in the woods along rice road tomorrow morning reporting from mexico i'm kelly cowan now new information has led investigators to a wooded area in Mexico that could potentially fill in some gaps in the 1994 disappearance of Heidi Allen. Federal public defender Lisa Peebles says they received a tip from a nearby neighbor that there was a cabin just across the street near Rice Road where Allen may have been buried. When investigators arrived on scene, it was clear that the scene was tampered with. What looked to be an area that was recently torn up, including um, wood, floorboards, mattresses, um, various other debris. And it appeared, based on uh, what we saw, that it had recently been disturbed. People says she does not know when the area was torn up, but finding these new details could bring us closer to what actually happened. It really coincides with what Tanya Priest had originally told sheriff's investigators when she was interviewed about admissions made by an individual named James Steen as to what they did with Heidi Allen. Investigators were here for the past couple of hours and since then they have left the scene. But we do know now that they're placing a deputy here overnight just to make sure the scene is secure. And tomorrow morning they will start a more detailed search. Reporting in Mexico, I'm Sarah Beth Ackerman. Uh, I'm going to be very brief today. Uh, we've concluded uh, with the examination and the investigation for today. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. 
to resume the investigation. Have a good night. Greg, one question. <laughs> hey, Greg, what, what, what the disturbance of the cabin, have you determined whether anyone did disturb it, and if so, who, um, before we were in there? We're not in a position to say at this time. Okay. And uh, is the cadaver dog coming back at any time? I don't anticipate the cadaver dog coming back at this time. Okay, all right, thank you. Greg, okay, can you thank tell you. us how much work you think you have left to do? Hard to say. Uh, we're just being thorough uh, to make sure we examine everything and we don't leave any stone unturned. So I would anticipate we'll probably be here through tomorrow. It's hard to say much beyond that. Were the footprints found at the site preserved? I'm not in a position to comment on that at this point. Greg, will the medical mm -hmm. examiners be back tomorrow? Um, at this point, I don't anticipate they'll be back, at least not first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. But later today? Later tomorrow? I don't, well, they won't be here, the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, at this point we don't plan on having the medical examiners here in the morning. We're going to have to go through the day and depending on what we find or don't find, uh, we may contact them. But at this point there's no plan to have the medical examiners here tomorrow. Is this taking longer than you had expected? It's taking as long as it needs to. <clears throat> the sheriff has been very good about dedicating whatever resources are need, uh, needed to fully investigate this. Make sure I try to take two on that. Sure. Uh, the sheriff has been very good about dedicating whatever resources and manpower is necessary to thoroughly investigate this. Uh, we anticipated being here as long as it would take, whatever and, that would require. And the investigators that are here on the scene, are they trained in forensics or? Uh, there's investigators who are trained in a number of aspects of investigations, including forensics and uh, evidence techs. Okay. okay. Did you take any material from the scene today? No. <laughs> no. Did someone else take the <laughs> uh, No. And at this point, we're not really in a position to talk about uh, what we did see or did not see today. Uh, hopefully, when we're all done uh, with this part of the investigation, we'll be able to let the family know first what we found, if anything, and then certainly let the public know. Is the family being updated daily, or will they be updated at the end of the investigation? Uh, the family is being updated daily. Um, I've been talking with them on a daily basis to let them know what's going on. Is there anything else you can tell us? My shoes? No. <laughs> no, there's there's not. But thank you all very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. This is the area right here between these two roots. roots. No. Where the dogs, the dog, both dogs indicated human remains. Picked up a scent of human remains. Both dogs, right there. What did you observe Hawk do as he searched? So after I released him with his search command, um, he started ranging out and made a couple of passes through the area. And on one pass by a large tree, he suddenly stopped, uh, turned around 180 degrees, went back to the tree with his head held high, and his sniffing pattern had changed. He was sniffing up the trunk, then he sniffed down below the trunk, down to the area which was part of the flattened dirt area. He continued to move along the dirt sniffing very intensely, pawing at it a little bit, and he moved northward along this entire area of dirt, um, paying, you know, very intense. He gets up to a little area that's like a mounded area at the end, and it, there's a branch or a root there, and he started sniffing very intensely there, dug a little bit with his paw, snorted in the soil, and then he downed. And when he downs, that's his indication that he has detected the odor of human remains. Where was canine Libby and handler Dana Malabar when you commanded Hawk to search? He stayed back at a distance where he would not be able to see the search I conducted with Hawk. The purpose of this was so that Dana would not be biased by having observed what Hawk was doing. Now, please explain the difference between an alert versus, as you just testified, an indication. An alert is a change in the dog's natural behaviors that are clearly visible as they're searching for odor and they come into odor. 
These changes can include the changes in the dog's speed and direction, changes in the dog's posture and body carriage, and importantly, changes in the dog's sniffing pattern. Now, when Hawk gave an indication, he went down. So what does that mean to you? So uh, the indication is a trained behavior that the dog uses to communicate uh, when the dog is in odor. And for cadaver dogs, the trained indication is frequently a sit or a down. For the past 20 years, Gary Thibodeau has maintained he is innocent and had no involvement in Heidi Allen's kidnapping. But numerous appeals courts denied his requests for a new trial, including his most recent appeal. Two years ago, new witnesses and new evidence was presented that implicated new suspects. But it was not enough for the judge overseeing his case. The judge says he didn't find any of this new evidence credible. Did you find it credible? Did you find it compelling? Oh, I, I thought it was overwhelming. Gary Thibodeau had little faith his appeal would be successful while it was being heard in Oswego County Court and claims the Oswego County Sheriff's Department made him stay in an unheated cell during the hearing. The Sheriff's Department, when they're driving me back, they're telling me, oh, you're going to freeze tonight. It's only one degree. I'm thinking, well, they got heat in the place. Well, they did in every cell but mine. Every time I went to court and I came back, I kept saying, I don't, I'm not going in that cell. I want another cell. They said they want him back in that cell. The Oswego County Sheriff has not yet responded to a call from CNY Central asking about the cell Gary Thibodeau was kept in. In an hour-long interview last week inside Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, Thibodeau firmly maintained his innocence in the Heidi Allen case. His health is fading, but now he has new hope he will be exonerated. I'm fine with, with my, my heart, my soul, my spirit, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I got, I got no problem with crossing over to the other side. And you worry that, that you wouldn't see that next round of appeals? No, no. I, I, I still don't think it's, you know, that uh, I'll see the end of it. Uh, they just, this judge just wasted a whole year of what few years I got left if I have eight years left. Thibodeau says he has been told if he confesses he could be let out of prison. But he says he refuses to confess to a crime he did not commit. For now, reporting from Danamora, I'm Alex Dunbar. Since 1994, Richard Thibodeau rarely goes out in public alone and has accepted that many in the Oswego community believe he and his brother Gary were responsible for Heidi Allen's disappearance. Gary Thibodeau was convicted of kidnapping Heidi Allen, but Richard was acquitted by a separate jury. For 20 years, I've been looking, on, looking in my back, wondering what people think of me and just afraid to go out into the public. Richard told police he bought two packs of cigarettes at the convenience store Heidi Allen worked at on the morning she disappeared. There was no physical evidence linking Richard and Gary Thibodeau to Heidi's disappearance. The main evidence against Gary Thibodeau came from two jailhouse inmates who testified that he confessed to them. In 2013, new witnesses came forward in the case and told investigators about three men that they believed killed Heidi Allen and hid her body. Richard Thibodeau followed the search of a remote Mexico site this week and was disappointed when no remains were located. And there, I was hoping and praying, you know, not just for my brother, but for the Allen family so they could get closure. Yeah. You know, I know they've been going 20 years trying to figure out what's happened to our daughter. Yeah. They can't get the information for us because we don't even know. Oswego County District Attorney Greg Oakes says he believes Gary Thibodeau is responsible for Heidi Allen's disappearance, but Oakes says he does not consider any case closed and is committed to finding the truth. If Gary Thibodeau did not commit this offense, then others did. And that means there are people who are capable of this type of crime in our community and who are free. If those people exist, I want to find them, I want to prosecute them, and I want to put them in prison. Richard Thibodeau says it is hard for him to trust the sheriff's department that charged him, but believes the new investigation can bring answers many people need. The truth is finally coming out. That's what I'm thinking. The truth is starting to come out. And if they look a little harder, they would find a little more of the truth. How is it for all these years to go through this hanging over your head? It's been very emotional. It's been very hard for Richard. There's days where 
He doesn't want to go anywhere. Daisy just wants to just... I was in my own little prison. Yeah. I mean, I didn't go to prison, but my house was my prison because I... Well, I got to imagine when, you're, when you go through a trial like that, everybody's still looking at you with a oh, certain yeah. uh, evil yeah. eye, right? Yeah, they, they were Especially looking Especially since me. your brother was convicted of this crime. Yeah. And he's in there. I'm sure people look at you like, yeah, he probably had something to do I with it. I went to grocery stores and... People grab their kids and go the other way, you know. And Our children were tormented. Oh so. yeah. Uh, Richard, you took a lie detector test. Yes. We asked you, did you participate in any way in Heidi Allen's disappearance? You answered no. Did your brother Gary participate with you in any way in Heidi Allen's disappearance? You answered no. Do you know where Heidi Allen is now? You answered no. Results came back all the same, and they came back that Richard told the truth. For this. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I we took a to polygraph him. from the sheriff's. It wasn't nothing like Dan did. Um, I, I can't imagine, well, first of all, everybody on stage, you've been through a lot. Oh, it's very God. courageous for you to even come forward with your story. Right. What's up? That doing this has put my life on the line. I've received death threats. I said, you know what? I don't care. <coughs> He's worth it. They've already took my husband, and I'm going to bring Gary home. Um, and I hope that when you go back home, that somebody will look at this, somebody get involved, somebody investigate this crime more, and I hope that someday your brother comes home to you. <laughs> 